Unit 5 is about quadratic functions. Just as Unit 2 was about linear functions and all their properties, Unit 5 will be the study of quadratic functions, their graphs, and all of their properties. Now, a quadratic function is any equation where the highest power of x is 2. So anytime you see the highest power of x being 2, you know you're dealing with a quadratic situation. Its graph is called a parabola because its graph will make a u-shape. Very similar to absolute value, which made a v-shape, quadratics are similar because they make a u-shape. Now, their applications include objects in flight. We're going to talk a lot about things flying through the air. Income in business is based on quadratic functions. And also the objects that fl fall through space, amongst many other applications. But that's what quadratics are. And probably the most important feature of this slide is number one up here. Make sure you realize that if it's a squared equation, it is quadratic. Now, I'm going to jump ahead, and we're going to talk about the parent function. The quadratic parent function is y equals x squared, because there's no add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And what I'd like to do for you is I want to draw the graph of the parent function. And we're going to talk about some different features that the parent function has. First of all, when you graph a quadratic equation, it is important to always graph five points. And as I mentioned, because the graph is a parabola and it makes a U-shape, it's very important to have five points. The most important point is going to be called the vertex. And the parent function, its vertex, lies at 0, 0. If I plug 0 in for x, you get 0 out for y. And so this dot right there is going to be called the vertex, which I'll label for you in just a second. But it's important when you graph quadratic functions to choose some values for x on each side of the vertex. And that is why I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. So I get a couple of points on each side so you know what the graph looks like. Now, if I take negative 2 and plug it in for x, negative 2 squared is going to be 4. If I plug negative 1 in, negative 1 will be 1. If I plug 1 in, I'll get 1. And if I plug 2 in, I'll get 4. Hopefully you guys realize that. And so therefore, I get a graph that looks like this. And I'll do the best I can on the smart board here to draw it. It's going to form a U, and it looks something... Oops looks something like this, if I can just draw it correctly here. It's a little more difficult and challenging on the smart board. But that's what it looks like. This point right here is called the vertex, just like it was in your absolute value equation. It's the minimum. The vertex is either the minimum or the maximum value. So get used to those words, which are going to be very important in this unit. Also, the parabola has what is called a line of symmetry that splits the graph perfectly in half. And those are the features about a quadratic functions graph that I want you to take note of to begin with. Last, I would like to compare this to linear. We all know a linear, the linear parent function is y equals x, and if you were to graph that or sketch the graph, it would look, it'd be a diagonal line right through the origin. Now, some differences about their table values. If you remember back from unit two, if I made a table of values of the parent function, the linear values change consistently. They go up 
consistently, which was the reason it was linear. Now, if you look at the table values for the parent function, y equals x squared for quadratics, you're going to notice the numbers I circle in green do not change consistently. Actually, they are symmetric. Because if you notice, the number zero is in the middle. And to the right of it, I have the numbers 1 and 4. And to the left of it, I have the numbers 1 and 4. The, the y values... The y values go down and then back up again. Which is why the graph makes a parabola. And that is important to know when you're looking at table values for the quadratic functions. The y values can go down and then back up or go up and then back down. But the most important thing is that they are symmetric. And that is what I want you to, those are the basic notes that I want you to remember for this unit on quadratics. One more feature that we've talked about all year long dealing with graphs is domain and range. The parent function for quadratics is y equals x squared. Now if you talk domain, domain is the x direction. Well, the arrows indicate that they continue to go on forever. So therefore, the domain is actually all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. So if you want to call this all real numbers, that would be good. However, the range, the range is based on the vertex. The range is based on the vertex, which is the minimum or the maximum value. So if you notice, in this particular case for the parent function, the lowest the function gets is 0. And then it's less than or equal to 0, or y is greater than or equal to 0, or less than positive infinity. So the lowest it gets is 0, and of course the highest it gets is to infinity. And so therefore, the parent function has a domain, negative infinity to positive infinity, and a range from 0 to infinity. And this, the range, is the one that can change based on your different graphs. So you have to pay attention to what the vertex coordinates is in order to, to write your range.